Welcome to Math Mastermind, where we help you master your math mind. In this episode of That's Taught in Algebra 2, we'll be looking at this particular quotation. Another day where they haven't needed to use the slope-intercept equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. Now, I don't know this particular individual, and they may have gone another day without it. However, what I'm going to show you in this episode is what are some everyday uses for linear equations and how can we use them in our everyday life. But first, here's the intro. Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. Slope intercept form of a line. Now first, before we can get into our uses, let's break down what are our variables here. First, we have an input and an output. Our input is going to be x, our output is going to be y. Our independent variable is x, our dependent variable is y. Now we are just using these as placeholders. Let's start off with that. These variables are just representations of real world action items that we're going to be looking at. And we're going to get into some examples. So these are just placeholders. We're not expecting you to take these equations and whip them out using these particular variables. We just need you to know what do these variables represent and what are these relationships between the variables. And that's what algebra is all about. So M represents the slope, your rate of change. Usually whenever you use the words per or for every. For every this, there's that. Or for this, per that. Hourly wages. Speed quantities of food, the list really goes on and on. And then B, the y-intercept, y equals mx plus B. The y-intercept is your starting value. Where are you beginning this journey? That's when the input is zero, what's the output? What are you starting with? So whenever you're looking at where you're starting and you're looking at a rate and where you're going, you're gonna be using linear equations. Whether you're dealing with budgeting, variable costs, rates, you're going to be using linear. If you've ever been in a position where you needed to get a certain amount of money and you need to figure out how you were going to get to that, that's using linear equations. If you got rent due at the end of the month and you got $50 in your wallet right now and you need to get to $500, that's a linear equation because you need to figure out how you're going to gain that $450 by the time you need to pay your rent. That's a linear equation. Anytime you're looking at a rate, you're using linearity. But let's get into some very specific examples. First, let's look at an example about variable costs. Have you ever rode an Uber? You ever ridden in a Lyft? Have you ever hailed a taxi? That's variable rates. Let's say you're looking at a taxi and it's $9 just to get into the vehicle. And then they charge you 15 cents for every mile. That's a linear equation. Y equals 0.15x plus 9. You're going to have that same thing looking at Uber, or if you get an Uber Eats, that minimum fee, that's your y-intercept. That beginning value, that's your y-intercept. So that's one example, riding in an Uber, Lyft, or a taxi. Let's talk about rates. Let's say you're looking at jobs, and you're comparing two jobs. Let's say job A offers you $450 per week. Then we have job B, which pays you $10 per hour. Both jobs want you to work 40 hour weeks. That's linearity. On job A, you have an equation 450 equals 40x. And you find out that x is equal to 11.25. Now we have in the other one, 10, y equals 10 times 40 where Y represents your total amount of money, X represents the number of hours worked. Now, when we compare these, we can see that one job is better than another, but we needed to use a little algebra, some linear equations in order to compare the two. Next, another example. Let's say we're talking about budgeting. Let's say you're a party planner and you need to figure out what's the budget that you're going to be presenting to your client because they're trying to have an event. You need to go to your client with some specific numbers and you're a party planner. You go to a venue and you find out the venue is 
$780 to rent. Then you need to feed the people. You calculate that it's going to be about $9.75 per person. Now you have yourself an equation that you can ask your client, how many guests are you going to have? You can plug it into the equation y equals 9.75x plus 780, where x is the number of guests and y is the total cost. Now we can make some budget discussions. We can also use linear equations to make predictions. We can, let's say you're planning a bake sale. And you know that you need to put out some money to make money. That's just the rule of economics. You got to use a little money to make some money. So let's say you have $200 of cost to set up for the bake sale. You're starting with a $200 deficit. And then let's say you make $150 a month with the bake sale. X represents the number of months. Y represents the total amount of money in your equation of Y equals 150x minus 200. Now you can use that to make some different predictions of how much money will you have after one month, two months, three months. But that is a linear equation dealing with budgeting. Now I don't know what you do every single day in your life, but if you ever drive and you're looking at miles per hour and you're starting at a destination and you're going to another destination, that's a linear equation. Because you're, as your speed is going, you're closing in that distance. If you ever had money in your pocket and you went and made a purchase, you've lost some money out of your pocket, that's a negative slope. That is a linear equation. The examples really go on and on. And so, in my challenge for the math teachers out there, make sure that when you're teaching this content, Make sure that you're making it connect, you're making it relevant, and you're bringing in these real world examples so people can see that this is more than just letters and numbers flying across the page. We need to know that these letters and numbers represent real things in real lives and help our students realize that. So make sure your math instruction is rooted in application. My fellow math teachers, my parents, make sure that you show your students that math is relevant and bring those bring them into your budgeting meetings when you're budgeting you're thinking about things like that make sure you include your children in that so that way they can see math at work in real life so they can realize that budgeting is algebra as well and students ask your teachers in a respectful manner what is a real world application for what math the math we're doing right now and see what response you get I'm pretty sure it's going to be one that can enlighten you because mathematics is the language in which we can interpret and understand the world. But this has been Math Mastermind. My goal is to help you master your math mind. You are not bad at math. You just need the right teacher. But don't you worry. You don't have to look far because I'm here to help you. Have a wonderful day.